What do you mean it's your fault? Cheryl asked. She didn't want to believe it. It's my fault that the experiment messed up. It's my fault that Kenny is stupid. It's all my fault. I'm the one who should be fired. Adam confessed. Don't say that, Adam. You don't have to be a martyr just because you don't want to see others fight. You've worked with me the longest. I know it couldn't have been you. Cheryl replied. She had worked side by side with Adam these long nights. She knew that he was thorough and precise. He'd never made a mistake before. Surely it was one of the new people she had only recently hired. They didn't know the protocol like he did. Adam knew how to do everything in this project like the back of his hand. He was the person she trusted most in this lab. I'm not being a martyr, it really was me, Adam said. I know you heard everyone arguing and accusing each other, and it saw me be overwhelmed, but it's my job to figure out who actually caused the issue so we can do this fairly. It wouldn't be fair for you to sacrifice yourself when it wasn't your fault, Cheryl said. Adam shook his head. I know everyone was getting at each other's throats, but that's not why I'm confessing now. I don't want you to stress about this, but I wouldn't lie just to make it easier. I love working here. I love working with you. It warmed Cheryl's heart to hear that he liked working with her. Adam continued, So it's taken a lot of courage for me to admit that I'm in the wrong, and I can't stand to watch everyone else accuse each other and for someone else to take the blame when I know that it was me. Is there someone else that you're protecting? Do you know who messed up? Cheryl asked. Adam was a good guy. He would take the fall for someone else. No, Cheryl, please just listen to me. Adam insisted. Was it Dana? Are you protecting Dana after the speech she gave about her mother? I already told Dana that I'm going to make sure her mother is okay. If it really was Dana's fault, then I have to be fair and fire her. I can't fire you just because you feel bad for her, Adam. Adam shook his head. Cheryl, why won't you just believe? Look at my face. Look at me. Seriously, look. Do I look like I'm lying? Cheryl scanned Adam's face. She knew him well enough now. It really didn't seem like he was lying. She just didn't want to believe it. That's why I tried to fix Kenny, Adam sighed. But he's unfixable. He really seems to have no connection to Benny. We've gone backward in our work since Lenny, and it's all because of me. Cheryl had to sit down. She couldn't believe this. She rubbed her face with her hands, stressed. Look, Adam, maybe you think you messed it up, but I just have a hard time believing that it really could be you. Adam kneeled down so he was on Cheryl's level. He put a hand on her knee. I realized it when I was playing with Kenny. I didn't think it was a problem when it happened, but when I went over everything I did in my head, I think it was me. Cheryl shook her head and sighed. So you think it was you, but you don't know? That seemed to reassure Cheryl. There was still a chance it wasn't his fault. Okay, explain it to me, Adam. What did you mess up? It was a late night in the lab, Adam said, painting the scene. I had been working around the clock. I was tired, but you know, I just tried to push through it. But the fatigue I felt was definitely affecting my thinking because, looking back, I don't know why I messed this up so badly. What did you do, Adam? I was supposed to titrate and calibrate the incubator and add more substrate for Kenny to grow. You've done that countless times, Adam. How could you have possibly messed that up this time? Cheryl asked. I collected and filtered the substrate properly. I could do that without even looking. I think that's maybe what's happened. I got cocky. I felt like I'd done it so many times that I didn't need to focus as much. I set up the substrate to titrate, piping it in according to the proper procedures, but then... Adam gulped. Then what? Cheryl asked. I wasn't looking for a little bit. And when I look back, the pressure gauge was high. The pressure gauge fluctuates, Cheryl said. It's okay for it to get higher and lower. It was really high, Cheryl. High enough to really mess things up, I think. 
How high was it? It takes a while for the pressure to build. You would have had to have been distracted for a lot longer than a moment for the pressure gauge to build up high enough to cause any damage. It got to 652 PSI when I looked back. Adam knew that what he just said would feel like a stab in the back to Cheryl. 652 PSI? Cheryl gulped. She couldn't deny it anymore. Adam, you're positive it said 652 PSI? I'm completely sure. I got it back down immediately once I noticed, though, so I thought it had maybe only been like that for a moment. I didn't think it would be such an issue. Adam pleaded. Adam, anything over 500 PSI would have crushed some of the cells that were developing in the incubator. Cheryl felt betrayed. Adam should know that. Why hadn't he told her sooner? but it would have taken at least five minutes for the pressure to have built up so high. Did you go to the bathroom or something? How did you not check the pressure gauge for a whole five minutes while you were adding substrate? You know that's the most sensitive time for the project. Did you get hurt or something? It must have been something important if it distracted you for that long. Adam gulped before he confessed. I was talking to Dana 